Hey guys, my name's Curtis Tilbury and I'm excited to join you from Possum Kingdom Lakes in the USA and we're about to watch the Red Bull Cliff Diving commence. I'm really excited because this is my first ever Red Bull Cliff Diving event I've attended. I'm also going to soak in all of the action as well as the sun rays because it is glorious weather, we don't get much of this in the UK. I got the chance to go up to one of the top diving platforms the other day and I can't believe people dive off these things, they're so high. I was just looking down and I was very scared. They're about eight stories high and oh dear, these people must be superheroes. They can do it without the capes. I'm going to keep up to date with all the action on the messenger service so make sure to subscribe to that. And I'm also going to go and have a look at all this diving because I just want to soak it all in so maybe I can get on one of these boats. Hello and welcome to the first event for 2018. This year it's a special occasion. We're celebrating the 10th anniversary of the series and what better place to kick it off than this spectacular location on Possum Kingdom Lake. A little later in the show, we'll bring you the men's final dives where for the first time, all 14 divers will compete in the last round. But first, the women will dive for glory from 21 meters. That's 70 feet high. The question is, can the two-time champion, Australian sensation, Rhiannon Ifland, win here for the third time in a row? We've already completed three dives so far. So let's take a look at the women to watch heading into the last round. Here we have Lisanne Richard. Great to see her back in action. Spent the entire year off last year injured. And we saw her come back at a training camp training camp in Canada. And it was an emotional moment for her to be back on the platform and a fine flying back somersault. But the real story is this, Jessica McCauley from Great Britain. The wild card, her second ever competition. Three nines from the judges. And she holds the record now for the highest woman's score of 108 points. The back triple somersault in the pike position. Can we see a wild card win here in Texas again? Anna Bada showing her prowess, her balance with the arm stand dive. Ever so elegant in the air. Last year she had three third place podiums. Also has a baby girl Roxana with her cliff diving partner, Chris Kalanis. Job well done. Huge crowd of spectators today. The conditions, well, let's put it nice and simple. Extremely hot, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 38 degrees Celsius. It's very important the athletes stay nice and hydrated. As you can imagine, with these conditions, you can feel quite lethargic. Now that's the place to be, look at that. The dogs loving it, the spectators loving it. 800 boats, 12 and a half thousand spectators. The lineup today in reverse order, the better performing divers towards the end of the round. The Sam Richard performing well. Rhiannon Ifland off to a slow start in the first two rounds. Third round dive was a much better performance. But Jessica McCauley, that is the story. Leading the charge right now from Great Britain as we sweep over huge crowd of spectators some of the boats gathered here since 6 30 this morning to get the prime viewing and here we have Ilanda Valdez from Mexico an environmentalist believes in conservation in her home country in Mexico her first ever competition gaining valuable experience there's the bell signifying the start of the dive. Back three somersaults, back two somersaults with one twist, standing backwards on the platform. Much better effort, good way to cap off her fourth 
and final round here at the first stop. Her first ever appearance. All smiles. Congratulations to her. Jumping up, spinning backwards. There's the half turn at the beginning. And this is the Barani coming around to adjust for the landing. That is a trampoline maneuver. The speed upon impact here is 71 kilometers per hour. Very, very fast indeed. Pulling around about eight G-forces in terms of the impact, stopping in 0.35 of a second. Ilanda Valdez enjoying the atmosphere and the experience here at the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series for her first competition, seventh place right now. Great flotilla, flotilla of all kinds of crafts. Birds, boats, dogs, you name it, it's out there. Beautiful Hell's Gate cliffs opposing each other, providing a spectacular backdrop for the world's greatest cliff divers, the Young Guns. Standing on the platform, Ely Smart, as she's known, just 22 years of age, has her Clean Cliffs project, sporting the American bathing suit. And I'm sure she'll receive a rowdy applause from the local Texans. Showing off her, her twisting prowess. Ely Smart from the United States of America. All the other athletes are very supportive of each other. Aerial awareness is key in this sport. Understanding what to do at the right moment in the air and the entry. Okay, the highest and lowest score will be dis be taken off and the remaining scores will be added together. There's the twist, two and a half twists, arms coming out wide to stop the twist, but at these speeds, oh so difficult to make those final adjustments. Have to really feel your way in the air. All of these athletes have at least eight years of diving experience behind them. 51.304, Ely Smart, the young gun. Okay, still have eight more divers to come. Watching the fourth and final round at the first stop of the season. We've had a long break. It's been eight months off. Speaking of young, just 17 years of age, her second competition. As a matter of fact, this was her first competition at this very location on Possum Kingdom Lake. Psychology student, big fan of football. She stays very calm and composed. Wise beyond her years. Greg Luganis, the Olympic diving legend. Two gold medals in the Olympics in Los Angeles, 1984. Back-to-back -back gold medals in 1988 in Seoul. One of the most renowned divers of all time. Graceful, stylish and elegant. He's taking care of the rules and regulations and the safety of the athletes. Forward three somersaults in the tuck position. So rotating forwards in a ball shape. How will she perform? The young gun impressing the crowds. There's Miguel Garcia, who lives in Cali, Colombia, and helps coach or coaches Maria Paolo Quintero. Great role model for her to make her feel secure. Could be a little stronger in the takeoff. There's that ball shape piking out. Now, the cliff divers use trampolining maneuvers, the last part of the dive, which is called the Barani. So let's watch closely. Tuck position and she'll come out right about here. And the trampoline has used that to land feet first onto the trampoline. In cliff diving, it's just too high to land head first as opposed to conventional diving in the Olympics. The high board there is 10 meters, 21 meters here and 70 feet up. Second position right now for Maria Paula Quintero.
look at that lineup of boats. They've been here, like I said before, since 6.30 this morning. Front row gets the best view of this woman right here, Ginger Huber. She's had eight podiums in her career. Only woman to score a 10. Residing in Orlando, Florida right now. There's the Timex dive clock. Big wave to the crowd, soaking up the atmosphere. And rightly so, what a turnout today. 12 and a half thousand spectators. This is the optional dive round. It's all about degree of difficulty, performing the most amount of somersaults and twists. There's the bell signifying the start of the dive. Front triple somersault in the pike position. Whoa, there we go, Ginger Huber. She's recovering from a knee injury that she suffered at the last stop in Chile. So it's great to see her back in form. It was just two weeks ago or three weeks ago where she did her first high dives in, a, in around about eight months. Long and arduous recovery process. Once again, highlighting the impact around about eight G-forces. We've also got centrifugal force here up to around about 11 Gs for the most difficult dives, flying her way down. Not quite straight up and, dive, up and down. The judges need to make sure the dive is vertical through the water. 71.40 for Ginger Huber. Another lead change. She's in the number one position right now. Still five more divers to come at this very location. Rihanna Nifflan won this, lo this competition in 2016 as a wild card. Make sure you sign up for our messenger service, rebelcliffdiving.com. And you can receive updates and information on the fly from the competition. So she was a wild card in 26 2016 won this competition, went on to win the entire series that year, and then won again and held the King Kai Kili Trophy last year, pushing through a pretty major knee injury at that point, a very tough and fierce competitor, cool and calm on the outside, but she likes to win, doesn't like to lose. Back three somersaults in the pike position with one twist, so she'll stand backwards, jump up, half turn, and rotate forwards. Can she do it? <laughs> That's what we expect from Rihanna Nifland, a rip entry. Round of applause from the crowd and the athletes. Now she's back on track. Had a bit of a rough start in the first two rounds, but replaying the dive now, swinging the arms up to generate rotation into that pike position there where the legs are straight, folding against the body. Coming from the trampolining background, as well as a diving background. Those two disciplines together make her the complete cliff diver. One of the true cliff diving sensations we have right now. What a great comeback. 100.70 for Rihanna Nifland. First position right now. Got two nines from the judges with that particular dive. Superb, great job. Now, she has to sit back and wait to see how the other athletes will perform. That's all she can do right now. Hell's Gate. What a backdrop, what a panorama. Beautiful location for these athletes. Very hot conditions here today. 
Once again, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, almost 40 degrees. No better place to be than in the water right now. Here we go, Jana Nestriava, the snowboarder, the drummer. Placed second twice last year in the 2017 season. She's a full-time series diver. You can see our Timex dive clock on the left-hand side of the platform. High degree of difficulty, front triple somersault with one and a half twists. You can see she had quite a, a heavy landing at the end of the dive. And let me tell you, that knocks the wind out of you. It really does. And like I mentioned before, at those speeds, it's like a heavyweight punch in the stomach. Throwing the arms forward to generate rotation. Twist at the beginning, pike in the middle. Watch this closely. You can really see how that water is pushing against the chest and into the stomach. So that would have been very difficult to breathe after that dive. This sport is only for the brave, and brave Jana Nestriava is. Just looked like she didn't bend early enough in the dive to pick up the rotation. Disappointing result there. 52.65 for Jana Nestriava. Just regaining her composure. But she's a very, very tough lady indeed. Okay, Rihanna Nifland holding on to the lead right now, 301.60. Ginger Huber, the local American, not doing too badly either. But next up, we have Adriana Jimenez. She won the award for the best Mexican athlete, received the prize from the president of Mexico, performing a dive with a high degree of difficulty. She won the, the competition in Portugal last year. Former cheerleader. Reverse triple somersault in the tuck position. Jumping up, facing forwards, but will spin back towards the platform. Telling the scuba divers to move into the right position that she likes. They'll splash the water to help her see the surface. There's the bell signifying the start of the dive. We're ready to go. There we have it, style and elegance in the air. Sergio Guzman, the fellow Mexican, he likes it. Sergio and Adriana train together in Mexico City, very supportive of one another. Big smiles. Wow, what a relief for her. These dives are so nerve wracking, especially the dives where you're rotating backwards or reverse. There we have it, seven and a half, three eights, one eight and a half. Once again, you add the middle three scores together. Looking at the jump, there's that ball shape, the tuck position. The toes are curled right over. And the entry up and down. The, the judges will look at the takeoff. Is it strong? Yes, it is. Is the position correct? Yes, it is. And just that third and final part, the entry. So they're not judging how difficult the dive is, just the execution. 93.60 for Adriana Jimenez. There we have it. She's taken the lead from Rihanna Nifland right now. All she can do is sit back and wait. We've got Jessica McCauley to come. The wild card with a very strong lead right now. But she has lower degree of difficulty. This is shaping up to be a very, very interesting competition. 
Would you dare to die from that platform? Look at how high it is. That's like standing on the fifth or sixth story of a high rise. Lisan Richard from Canada, mother of three. She used to perform in Cirque du Soleil shows. A very, very passionate cliff diver. Coming back from injury, wishing her all the very best. Running takeoff, front, triple somersault, one and a half twist. Lissau Richard faltering, unfortunately. So brave to even attempt that running takeoff. But we have a lot of respect for Lissau. A whole year off competing. It takes a long time to get back in the rhythm. She uses this running takeoff to generate more rotation, throwing forward. There's the twist, there's the pike. But what I see is just coming out too early at that point and not enough rotation, not enough rotational velocity from the platform. But with a few more competitions, she will start to feel what she needs to do. She's shaking off the dive rust and the competition rust, but so good to see her back. 54.60 for Lassane Richard, third place right now. Jonathan Perez there, last year's World Series champion. We'll see him coming up in the men's fourth and final round. Seven stops this year. Athletes to come up. Anna Bader from Germany. Smooth and stylish as ever. Eagerly awaiting the performance for Jessica McCauley. Adriani Jimenez in the lead right now. And about her mother and her partner, Chris Kalanis, also a cliff diver. She will show off her arm stand. She requires supreme balance and concentration on this dive. Wow, just standing on the platform is hard enough. But to be able to hold that handstand with such confidence, she's, tr she's trying to play it safe this year. As I said, she had a baby girl, Roxana, only a few years ago, trying to balance family life with her partner, Chris Kalanis. Look at the toe line, just look closely at the line of the legs, the judges really like to see that toe point that it, that is a very crucial element in being aesthetically pleasing and that is what the sport is all about so what she's trying to do is go for maximum execution rather than degree of difficulty that's her strategy this year but all around there's a kiss and a hug from chris kalanis 82.50 second position right now just behind Adriani Jimenez, we have one more diver to come to cap off the fourth and final round. Jessica McCauley representing Great Britain. Will we see, will we see another wild card taking a win here in Texas? We saw that with Rihanna Nifland in 2016. And here we go, Jessica McCauley. She must score sevens to win the competition here. Can she do it? 
slightly lower degree of difficulty than Adriana Jimenez, who's in the lead right now. Her mum sitting in the water, nervously and eagerly awaiting the result. Okay, we have some questions hanging in the balance, but the judges have the perfect perspective from the side angle. They'll look at everything to take off the flight and the entry, but she's in with a chance. All I can sit here, all I can do is sit here and wait. And that's all she can do right now. But imagine that, another wild card winning a competition. What will be her fate right now? Gigi Huber, Anna Bader. What a crowd, what a competition. I'm so impressed with the level of... Okay, three, six and a half, seven and a half, one, seven. We have to tally up the scores right now. And I don't think it's gonna be enough. Our expert panel of judges, some of them former Olympians. We've got Andre Ignatenko there, the winner of the first Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series 2009. Jessica McCauley, front triple somersault in the pike position, but what I'm noticing is just too slow on rotation. Watch this, running out of room to finish the dive. The, the splash is coming off the chest. Perhaps the nerves got the better of her, but still this is her second competition. No matter the result, we are very proud of her. And she only learnt a brand new dive, which she performed yesterday. Nerves of steel. There we have it, 68.00. Jessica McCauley, second position. Adriana Jimenez from Mexico will take the win here. She was second place last year in Texas. Congratulations to her. What a result. A few shaky dives at the beginning, but held strong on the most difficult dives. Wow, what a day for her. Second win in her Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series career. The winning dive for Adriani Jimenez. Reverse triple somersault, the arms swinging up. Good elevation. Look at the form, watch how the knees stay together. The toes pointed, nothing is out of line. Just counting the second somersault, look at that. Seeing the water for the second time, choosing the right moment to come out of the dive, looking at the toes. Head comes back, and at that point, you have to understand what do I need to do? When do I bend? You can see a bending just there. And that was the dive. That won the competition here in Possum Kingdom Lake. Superb. Well done. Great way to start the season for her. Four more competitions for the women this year. The results, 300. And 2.20, Adriani Jimenez, Jessica McCauley, the wild card, taking the podium, her second ever competition. Well done. Anna Bada, third again. She had thir three third place finishes last year. But Rihanna Ifland within striking distance. And believe me, she'll come back strong, no doubt. Lassam Richard, great to see her back again. And a few of the young guns, young guns Maria, Paula, Quintero, Ely Smart. Hopefully she can improve in her next Okay, here we are. We'll kick off the men's fourth and final round soon. Now we've got some questions from our social media team from people putting comments on Facebook. Why are the scuba divers splashing the water? Now, the myth is that most people think that breaks the surface tension. It does not. It helps the athletes see the surface of the water to help them adjust for the landing, especially when it's very clear and transparent. If we're in the Pacific Islands, for example, clear water there, you need more splash than normal. And that is why. Okay, so what a great women's competition. 
But now, let's check in with our host, Curtis, to see what's happening down at water level. I'm sure he's having a grand old time down there. Hey guys, so as you can see, I'm on a boat now with some amazing people. They're really enjoying their time watching the cliff diving, aren't you? Yes! So we'd love to know where you guys are enjoying the cliff diving from as well. Maybe that's in the water, cooling down from the Texan heat. Maybe that's on another boat. Or maybe you're just at home enjoying yourself. Make sure to share it with the hashtag Red Bull Cliff Diving. I've also seen Parks Bonifay going around on a jet ski. So I'm going to see if I can catch a ride. Let's go. Okay, we've got Parks Bonifay, the legendary water skier. Started water skiing at six months of age. His father, and he's a wakeboarder out here with my longtime homie. Okay, Jeff Barton. Okay, this is way too much fun out here. Parks Bonifay, legendary wakeboarder, winner of the X Games at age 13. Also great perspective from the Rebel Air Force there. Okay, we're moving on to the men now. So the men's round will come a little bit later. We've got Rebel Air Force coming up shortly as a little side act. Skydiving. I think this is the best view in the whole house, no doubt. Look at that, cool, calm and collected as he's flying in the air, looking down at that huge crowd of spectators. 800 boats, 12 and a half thousand people watching this competition here at Hell's Gate Possum Kingdom Lake. Look at all the boats lined up. Some pretty crazy floating devices out there. So we got the fourth and final round at the first stop of the Rebel Cliff Diving World Series 2018. That's the place to be. Got the cooler inside the large birds on the water. And they're saying, oh, we're having a terrible time down here. I'm sure you are. I wouldn't mind popping out of the, the commentary booth and being in the water right now. Extremely jealous, let me tell you. So hot out here today. And the action is hot. Look at how high that platform is. The men's platform standing at 27 meters. Okay, so this year we have a rule change. We will be letting all 14 divers compete in the fourth and final round today. We'll be underway shortly with the men performing their dives. But first of all, let's take a look at the dives or the best dives from the previous rounds. Blake Aldridge taking the lead in round one. He won the competition last year, last year here in Texas. Former Olympian from 2008, showing off his flexibility with this dive. And a nice clean result, a rip entry. What's a rip entry? It sounds like you're tearing cloth, cloth when you're going through the water. David Kulturi with the inward triple. Pike, the intermediate dive round. He's been training so hard in the off season, working on his entries, that was the the part of his repertoire that was lacking. And how about this man, Chris Kalanis. Watch this dive, an inward quad somersault in the pike position. Pow, nine and a halves from the judges. What a feat, what a diver. Normally the divers don't perform so well at the first stop. Supreme flexibility. Full marks, and he's got the lead right now in the competition. Blake Aldridge sitting in second, David Kulturi in third. Here we are rising to the occasion on top of the cliffs. Reverse order once again, the better performing divers towards the end of the round. Andy Jones faring pretty well, Sergio Guzman had a few, let's say, not so easy times at one of the competitions in Bosnia. But Chris Kalan is from Poland, the series diver, with a good lead right now. So the better performing divers going toward the end of the round. 
beautiful aerial view. PK. This is the Brazos River, the reservoir, the water supply for the local town here. There's the Timex dive watch to kick off the fourth and final round. We've already had three rounds completed so far. Carl Mitrione, the wild card, has the highest degree of difficulty out of all the divers. He's a filmmaker working in a show in Dubai right now with Franco Dragon, the creator of Cirque du Soleil. Look at the red marking at the top left-hand so side of the screen. 5.2 degree of difficulty. Taking a deep breath, calming the nerves before the dive. So much action from start to finish. Busy, busy, busy. Faltering on the end, unfortunately. But we salute him for even attempting this dive. The triple quad, three and a half twists at the beginning, coming out, leg splitting apart. A few deductions from the judges. And you can just see there, passing the line. That means he's going over on the entry. A little bit too far away from the platform. The judges will look look at that component. They prefer if, if he's a little bit closer to the platform. But the mental game of this sport is key. Being able to visualize the dive, being able to stay cool, calm and collected. The more preparation you can do, the calmer you'll feel. Kyle Mitrione, 259.25. Jonathan Perez holds the record for the highest scoring dive. Zooming in on Hell's Gate and zooming in on the talent. We have to come, all 14 divers. In the fourth and final round, Miguel Garcia studies economics. He's a diving coach back in Cali, Colombia. And I'm sure his young divers are watching this broadcast right now, cheering him on. Our Timex dive clock on the left-hand side of the screen. Inward, four somersaults. He'll spin in towards the platform, standing backwards. Whoa, the wild card. Maria from Colombia is very supportive of Miguel Garcia. Miguel actually coaches Maria. There we go. Pointing his hand to the sky saying, yes, I did it. I overcame my fears, throwing the arms forward. There's that tuck position, which is a ball shape. So when you hear tuck, that is the ball shape position. And stretching the dive out. More or less up and down. He needs to feel his way in the air, counting the somersaults. And he picked the perfect moment to come out of the dive. Those forward rotating dives, you'll feel the light, heavy sensation as you're passing by. 112.20 for Miguel Garcia. Eights from the judges. First position right now. The legend Orlando Duque is also from Cali, Colombia. And has been assisting Miguel Garcia along the way. There's that hot trail walking up to the top of the platform. Jonathan Perez. Orlando Duque and David Kulturi, the heavyweights in the cliff diving world, yet to come. And here we have Nikita Fedotov, the Russian. First appearance last year in Bosnia, took third position, so we know he's a very talented diver, has great acrobatic skills, and he will show off a dive that nobody else is doing. An arm stand dive, watch this. Pressing into the arm stand backwards. Three and a half somersaults in the pike position. The legs will be straight and folding against the body. Have to hold a very steady balance. You can see the wind picking up with the flags there. Makes it 
more difficult for the arm stand dives. dive. I can't believe how nervous he must have been trying to hold the balance in the handstand, in the wind. Round of applause from the other athletes. Nobody else at the moment is daring to perform this particular dive. He works in a diving show in China, so he's a show performer like many of the other athletes. Slightly low scores, but high marks for bravery. The highest and lower scores are taken off. The remaining three scores are added together. Kicking the legs, watching the water as he passes by to orientate himself. And unfortunately, missing the entry, the finer details. First competition of the season. Like I said before, just shaking off the rust a little. But he is a talented athlete and he will improve with years to come and competitions to come. 93.60 for Nikita Fedotov. Second position. Hot day and hot action. Steve Labou, the spin master. There's a baby girl back home. Living in Florida right now. First person in the world to perform this dive. Timex dive clock, counting down. Huge degree of difficulty. Now he's marking out his running takeoff to make sure he gets the exact position right to land on the end of the platform for maximum rotation. Whoa, spinning at breakneck speed. David Kulturi, he likes it. Yeah, buddy. The spin master is so powerful. Saying thank you to the scuba divers, making sure everybody is safe. What a treat for the spectators here in Possum Kingdom Lake. Steve Labou, the American, watch this running towards the end of the platform. Centrifugal force, G forces up to 11 Gs picking the right moment to come out of the dive. Hopefully receiving high scores with high degree of difficulty. That's how you get the maximum score. Watch how the arms will throw forward, genera generating rotation. The arms will squeeze in so he doesn't slip out of the dive. That can happen from time to time. So it's important that the divers dry their legs with a chamois to make sure they have plenty of grip. 124.95 for Steve Labou, and that puts him in first position right now. A few shaky dives in the earlier rounds, but what a way to finish. Next up, we have the legend, Orlando Duque, the winner of the first Rebel Cliff Diving World Series 2009, just finished a project in, in Antarctica. Back three somersaults with three twists. The legend, the iconic diver, Orlando Duque. Not quite the result Orlando Duque was looking for. 43 years of age, the most experienced cliff diver on the planet, almost 20 years of competition experience. Takes part in many projects around the world. Jumping up into the twist, second stage of the dive, that's the pipe position, you really feel the G-forces. 
the acceleration curve. At this point, the wind really starts to rush past the ears. Big kabooming splash. Some deductions at the end of the dive, unfortunately, for Orlando Duque. What a legend. And the likes of Kelly Slater in the surfing world, still competing in his 40s. Remarkable. 75.90 for Orlando Duque from Colombia. Sweeping shot of the spectators. Drawing closer towards the end of the round. We have a talented young man on the platform. Orlando Duque coming out to greet some of the spectators and friends. Local Colombians. Alessandro De Rose, Mr. Smiley, 25 years of age took his first ever win in Italy last year in front of the home crowd. Always a pleasure to be around. Another back arm stand, two and a half somersaults, three twists. Well, the locals, the Texans, they are so impressed when they see these arm stand dives. Alessandro De Rosa, he likes it. Full of fire, full of passion. That's what we like to see. There's so much emotion involved with this sport. There's a lot of fear before the dive. You're always scared of the dive. You should be, you need to respect what you have to do. This is not an easy discipline. Kicking the legs, generating rotation. The arms wrap across the body to start the twist. Comes out of the twist at the correct point. And how does he finish it? Pretty good. A few little errors at the end. So he needs to be as vertical as possible on the entry. Feeling his way in the air. And the divers generally train from lower heights, from five meters, seven meters, 10 meters, to practice those acrobatic skills, the first part of the dive, to make sure that they are well orientated before attempting the plunge from such great heights of 27 meters, 90 feet high, 105.75 for Alessandro De Rose. Second position right now, Steve Labou still holding the charge. Well done. Still six more competitions to come during this season. Okay, make sure you post your comments on Facebook. We'll try our best to answer the comments. Also sign up for our messenger. The wind dropping down a little now, which is better for the divers. Sergio Guzman, the salsa dancer, the fiery young Mexican, did have a very bad landing with this dive last year in Bosnia. Taking a very deep breath, trying to calm the nerves. Time to focus. Splashing the water. Reverse four somersaults in the tuck position. Sergio Guzman, wow, he's overcome his fears with that dive. He's happy, fist pump in the air. Adriana Jimenez, she likes it. Fellow Mexican who just won the competition, as we saw in the women's event. Reverse somersault, watch closely, watch the head counting the somersault. One, counting the water for the second time there. Third time there, head flicking back, kicking out doing a wonderful job adjusting for the entry. We're looking for a no splash entry. 
too far away from the platform for my liking. There will be some deductions from the judges. When you travel further away from the platform, it makes it harder to complete those reverse rotations. And he would have been extra, extra nervous before the dive, knowing that he had a bad landing last year. Talk about facing your fears. Steely-eyed man, Sergio Guzman, the salsa dancer. His wife and baby at home. I'm sure they're proud right now. 114.75, the wild card Sergio Guzman scoring 1-9 from the judge. First position right now, takes the lead from Steve Labou. Shaping up to be a very, very yes, interesting competition. I'm actually very surprised about the standard. Normally the divers will be a little bit hit, hit and miss. At the first event here, the crowd roaring there. They love this sport. Andy Jones, the all-round athlete, Cirque du Soleil performer, stuntman, was almost a professional baseball player. Third overall, 2016. Struggling with a back injury right now. Front three somersaults, two and a half twists, taking off in the front direction. Very consistent entries. from Steve LeBou <laughs> and the Americans. Listen to them cheer. Raw emotion down here at water level. Can you believe it? Pushing through this injury, he struggles with this part of the dive, the pike position. He really feels stiff, he was saying, in that part, coming out of the twist. And with those years of experience working in Cirque du Soleil in Las Vegas in the show there, oh, He's found the way to sneak through the water. Has a gymnastic style with his twist. He was the winner of the night event in Dubai, 2016. A nine and a half, a nine from the judges. First position for Andy Jones. A man with an injury performing so, so well. Be proud of yourself. Andy Jones. Leading, Guzman second, Labou third. Got some big names coming up though. Gary Hunt climbing the ladder, six times Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series champion. Juggler, pianist, speaks three languages. A clever man indeed, studied forensic science. He's not twisting anymore at the moment, suffering from a mental block. So he can't quite figure out how to perform a single twist or double twist. Performs the wrong num number of twists, but here he is changing his dives, hoping for high execution. Best of luck, Gary Hunt. Oof. A brand new dive for Gary Hunt. He only learned that dive a few days ago, like I was saying before. He has to stick with rotating dives. The twisting dives are causing him some bother, which cost him the World Series last year at the final stop in Chile, where he performed the wrong dive. If you don't perform the dive as described to the judges, zero scores, so playing it safe. Three seven and a halves from the judges, one six and a half. Brand new dive though. Tuck position one, two, and here, just coming out too early in the dive. And when you come out too early, the body is longer, a larger radius, and that slows the dive down, and that caused the poor landing at the end of the dive. Not too poor, but he was not straight up and down. Way too early at that point there. So it takes some time to get the dive dialed in. You're making split second judgments in the air. 96.80 for Gary Hunt.
fifth position right now. So no podium here. Andy Jones leading. Sergio Guzman from Mexico second. Steve Labou third from the United States of America. Coming up, Jonathan Perez, the World Series winner from last year. Mikhail Navratil and David Kulturi. Third place last year in Texas. Jonathan Paredes, the rip master, the style master. Needs nines from the judges to win. An uncharacteristic mistake from Jonathan Paredes. A very, very high dive, creeping above the 27 meter mark. And he's very small, so he rotates very easily. With this particular dive, he's just overcooked it. So reaching up, generating rotation, too far away from the platform, pike position here, coming out and just rotating too fast. You can see his body just totally straight at the end of the dive, hoping he'll hit the dive. Maybe he needs to add another twist to the dive. Believe it or not, adding another twist might make it easier for him to execute the dive from these heights. So unfortunate for Jonathan Paredes. But he is the rip master, the style master. No doubt he'll come back strong. Hit and a miss. But let's focus on the divers to come. Orlando Duque giving some advice. They're good friends, 77.60. Jonathan Perez, sixth place right now. A mentor, Orlando Duque for Jonathan Perez, and a great mentor indeed. He's got the best possible advice, the most experienced cliff diver on the planet, Orlando Duque. Andy Jones, can he win here in front of the home crowd in Texas? That is the question. Three more divers to come. Mikhail Navratil will need eight and a halves from the judges to take the lead. He's got some pressure on his shoulders. Mr. Energetic. Full of power, full of strength. Stuntman and talented cliff diver. Oh! The two and a half twisting triple is his dive of selection, and he has chosen well. Yes. Look at the expression on his face. High five for the scuba divers. Listen to the reaction from Mikhail Navratil. Slapping the water. Inhalation. Fabulous diving. What do the judges think? Okay, so what did the judge see? One judge saw something, and I believe maybe... Oh no, <laughs> Claudio Demiro. Had the score upside down. <laughs> Four nines from the judges. Never mind the six, Claudio De Miro. Two twists there coming out at the right moment. The Barani, the skill adapted from trampolining. They always use that skill to land feet, feet first on the trampoline bed, combined with the sport of diving. Makes cliff diving. 85 kilometers per hour on impact, 11 G-forces on the body. Traveling down about four to five meters when they hit the water, when it's a good entry. Big wave to the crowd. There's our scuba divers in the water, making sure everyone's safe. 116.10 for Mikhail Navratil. First position right now, he's taken the lead from Andy Jones. Sensational. Beautiful weather. Beautiful weather, beautiful diving, Mikhail Navratil. The American, David Kulturi. Up next, 
former medical student, dropped out of med school to be a cliff diver. Imagine that, his father's a surgeon. That was an interesting conversation. But I tell you what is interesting, walking through the grass field near the hotel, David Kulturi got bit by a snake on the ankle. There was a nervous moment, wondering if the snake was venomous. But I'm, well, fortunately for David Kulturi, it was not venomous. You can see the snake bite there. So if that wasn't hard enough, or scary enough, now this is a scary dive coming up. Brand new dive. The only other person to perform this manoeuvre was Blake Aldridge. Reverse two somersaults with five twists. Massive, massive degree of difficulty. Talk about pressure. Surviving the wilderness and surviving cliff diving has his parents down below watching. Time to focus, time to breathe. 5.4, visualizing the dive, that helps the performance. Watch him picture the dive, watch him imagine what he needs to do. Watch how he takes a deep breath. Set and ready. He needs to score sevens from the judges to take the lead. Huge dive. It just felt like the twist was never going to end. Wasn't the greatest result at the end, but full credit, full marks. You can see Mikhail Navratil bowing towards David Kulturi. They all understand the complexity, the skill required to attempt this dive. Let's watch the replay. The arms will swing up to generate rotation. Looks like he got into the twist a little too early. A little wobbly at the, at the end of the twist. And he just needed to bend early. You can see that really heavy landing, the water pushing up against the chin. It might have been hard to breathe after the dive. Watch this point, holding on, holding, getting wobbly right there. But his aerial awareness is absolutely superb. Won't be enough to take the lead. Surviving snake bites, surviving the dive. But with more practice with that particular dive, I do believe he will improve 72.90. So you still need good execution for high DD dive. Seventh place for David Couturi. All right, two more divers to come. Soon we'll see Blake Aldridge, the winner of this stop in 2017. 35 years of age, former Olympian, keen fisherman, leg heavily bandaged, suffering from a groin injury, choosing an easier dive. Whoa, listen to the sound when he hits the water. Fabulous. When I talk about an easier dive, it wasn't that easy indeed. Big question left hanging. Can Blake Aldridge take the lead? Throwing forwards, pike position. Now his legs want to pull apart due to the groin injury. Just a little split there as he came out. And he seems to be a lot more consistent with the entries. So he's got Great aerial awareness, looked a little squirrely in the air. And the judges will make a few deductions for a few of the parts of the body that were bent. Everything should be nice and straight. But still 101.05 for Blake Aldridge. Second position right now, Mikhail Navratil. 
still in the lead. Andy Jones in third. One more diver to come. Chris Kalanis. Apache season last year. You can see Blake obviously showing signs of an injury from that tremendous impact. Jones third, Aldridge second. Jonathan Perez slipping back. And same with Gary Hunt, some of the big names out there. Zooming in for our last dive. Here we have a front five somersaults in the pike position, the same dive as Steve Labou. Such a high tariff with these more difficult dives, comes with more nerves, the artistic character. Mad Hopper events, had his own record label. Pana Anabada, another cliff diver that we saw in the previous rounds. Going for his first ever victory. Chris Kalanis, massive degree of difficulty. He must score sevens from the judges. It's all up to you, Chris Kalanis. Can you win? I do believe he's done it. What a dive. Front five somersaults. Super clean, super stylish, super diving here at the first stop 2018. No rust with his diving. I could not be more proud of you, buddy. And you can hear Steve Labou saying he's so proud. Good sportsmanship. I like to see that. And there we have the scores. Eight and a half, eight and a half, eight. Eight and a half from the judges. 130.05 for Chris Kalanas winning the competition here. His first ever win in a Rebel Cliff Diving World Series. Job well done. What a thrilling, thrilling men's competition. First ever win, calm and focused. So great to see the field improving amongst all the athletes. Here's the winning dive, holding on, four and a half. There's the briny, that makes it five somersaults, drawing down the splash for a rip entry. Running to the end of the platform, that helps him gain more rotation. We did not predict this. We had a few big guns in mind, Jonathan Paredes to be up there, but not to be his day. But today, it's all about Chris Kalanis. I think he's in disbelief. I don't think he knows, or I don't think it's really registered that he's won the competition. You can see him looking at the scores. The adrenaline before the dive, his heart rate must have been jacked. Watch how he skips toward the end of the platform. Watch the arms carefully here. Watch how they'll bend and throw. That's a technique to generate rotation. And you want to talk about flexibility, look at that. This is centrifugal force, 11 G-forces pulling right now. The arms are under strain, just trying to hold onto the legs, feeling that light and heavy sensation. Here's that heavy sensation coming towards Mother Earth and Mother PK, Possum Kingdom Lake, traveling at breakneck speed. 85 kilometers per hour, 53 miles per hour, 11 G-forces. A well-deserved win, no doubt, hands down. Superb. And the crowd here are being greeted with a treat with the world's best cliff, cliff divers, Chris Galanis, winning the competition, Mikhail Navratil, Blake Aldridge, third place, Sir, and Andy Jones holding strong, so very important to have a good start to the season to maintain confidence. Great comeback from Sergio Guzman, the Mexican. Gary Hunt back in the field. He really needs to improve the execution. And Jonathan Perez sliding back there. 
but we know he'll come back determined as ever as the next competitions. Okay, so make sure that you post your pictures on Instagram, hashtag Red Bull Cliff Diving. You might even show it on the screen, show, share your experiences, your videos. Tell us where you are. Let's have a look at a few photos. Even if you're in the lounge room, please post away. But I'm sure there's some spectators in the boats out there. We want to see your images, your videos, any comments you may have. Maybe we can answer some questions. Day at the lake with great friends watching the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Championship. Hey, 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 we're having a good time down here in the water. I'm jealous. Let me out of the commentary booth. Let me in the water, it's hot. The world's greatest cliff divers on display. And we'll have the prize giving, giving coming up for the women first, and then it will be the men as we shuttle the athletes across the river to the mainland off Hell's Gate. Celebrating the 10th anniversary of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series, which began in 2009. It's been one, many wonderful moments. Orlando Duque was the first ever winner in 2009. Another fan here at the lake. Nicely framed picture. And from that perspective, you can really gain a perspective of the height. Okay, we're going to check out the prize giving ceremony shortly. And we'll see the top three women, which will be Adriani Jimenez, first place, Jessica McCauley, second, Anna Bader, another third place finish. We have a total of seven stops this year. Seven for men, five for the women. But this has been a fine competition. Look at all the <laughs> fantastic floating devices out there. And every year, the locals come out in droves to watch this competition. Some of the boats, they were lined up here at 6.30 this morning to make sure they had the front row seat. There's our podium awaiting the lucky women. Now, the level of the sport has risen. So this year we're seeing 10 women competing in all the competitions. So six permanent divers, four wild cards per stop last year we had eight showing how that the level of execution is improving and the field is expanding there we have anna Bader taking another third place position three third places last year the mother the fine cliff diver jessica mccauley the wild card second ever competition remarkable performance by her, learning a brand new dive, the back triple pike. Well done. Young guns. And from Mexico, the winner, Adriana Jimenez. She took her first win last year in Portugal. What a way to start. Great, confident booster. Heading into the season, four more stops for the women. Big smiling faces, celebrations tonight, huh? And if you are one of the locals, maybe you can hang out with some of the cliff divers, listen, listening to the national anthem of Mexico.
Congratulations once again to our podium finishers. Time for a little champagne splash. Celebrations tonight for these lucky ladies. Cheers, there we go. Take a well-deserved sip. It's been so much preparation, a very long off season, eight months off since the last competition in Chile last year. But soon we'll see the men's prize giving ceremony. And we'll see our winner, Chris Kalanis from Poland. Mikhail Navratil, second position. Blake Aldridge, third. And I'm sure all of the fans out here have enjoyed this competition thoroughly. Teammate Sergio Guzman. So much training goes into this sport. Visualization, the mental aspect. In there we see place, Blake Aldridge receiving another podium finish. Mikhail. The winner last year, 2017 in Texas. Mikhail Navratil. Good start to the season. Had a rocky start last year, but comes back with all guns blazing. But the man of the hour, the man of the competition, will be Chris Kalanis from Poland. Full points towards the series. There he is. I'm sure this will be one of the highlights, and one of the best memories for Chris Kalanis for many, many, many years to come. Now would you all please rise for the playing of the national anthem from Poland. Well, that concludes the ceremony for the men. Champagne splash. Time to celebrate. Time to feel proud of your achievements here today at the very first stop, 2018 Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Make sure you share your experiences on Instagram and on Facebook. Hashtag RedBullCliffDiving.com. Okay, fo folks, the next stop will take us to the city of Bilbao, Spain, where the men will dive from the Salva Bridge right in front of the famous Guggenheim Museum. Thousands of spectators will line the banks of the river as the divers fight for the win and for valuable points toward the World Series and for the King Kai Kili Trophy. That competition will take place on the 30th of June. Make sure you watch that competition on Facebook Live and on Rebel TV. So stay tuned to rebelcliffdiving.com for more details. Well, thank you, Texas, for being such great hosts for the first stop of the 2018 series. What a competition and what a turnout. Congratulations to our winners, Adriana Jimenez and Chris Kalanis. Now remember, you can see all the finals action for the second stop of the season on the 30th of June on Rebel TV and on Facebook Live. So on behalf of the team, thanks for watching and see you again in Bilbao, Spain.